I've got the seven most useful college majors where you can earn six figures. And in some cases you can do it in your very first job right out of college like I did. And the first one on the list is going to be a tie between statistics and mathematics. So I know the moment you hear mathematics, you're probably gonna be afraid, but I found this really good quote. It's mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithms. It's about understanding. This is by William Paul Thurston. So the way you think about mathematics is it's kind of like a Swiss army knife, right? A Swiss army knife has multiple tools that can be used for many different purposes. And in the same way, mathematics has a wide range of techniques that can be applied to many different fields. So whether you're interested in business, finance, computer science, engineering, or even art, mathematics has something to offer. So for instance, there was a mathematician named James Simons who became one of the most successful hedge fund managers on Wall Street. So let's go ahead and look at the statistics with this one. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but I am gonna use the statistics from my college degree ranker. And this is the newest 2023 version of the college degree ranker. So the early career pay is going to be $57,000. The mid career pay is around $100,000. 102,000. The demand score is off the charts at 120 out of 100. And the meaning is about 45%, which is decent. And the total amount of bachelor grads per year is about 17,000. So let's quickly talk about the pros and the cons of getting a mathematics or statistics degree. So first of all, your skills are going to be very versatile. Mathematics and statistics related skills can be used in just about every business, just about every industry out there. There's also a high demand for your skills. There's not that many people who are good at mathematics and if you are good at it and especially if you like doing it this can be great and then the salaries tend to be really competitive so if you are really good at mathematics especially if you specialize in a certain industry or a business you can get paid really well now let's talk about some of the cons so there are limited job opportunities for doing purely mathematical related things so typically you're going to be using your math skills but you're going to be using it in such a way where you're probably not challenging yourself nearly as much as what you studied in school. Speaking of studying in school, that's another con, is that mathematics is relatively difficult. It's probably one of the hardest degrees. And the third con is, of course, that a lot of people do not like mathematics. So of course, if you don't like math, do not get a mathematics degree. Overall, mathematics degrees do offer quite a bit. So you're gonna learn versatile skills, you're gonna have high demand, you're gonna have really good personal satisfaction, and it's going to teach you how to accurately count all the times that you smash the like button on my videos. Number six on the list is going to be another tie. It's going to be between accounting and finance. Now, accounting and finance are both going to have to do with the financials of a company, but typically accounting is gonna look at the ins and outs that happened in the past, whereas finance is going to try to predict or model the ins and outs that are going to happen in the future. So accounting tends to be a little more versatile. There's typically more accounting jobs, but finance jobs tend to be higher paying, but they're also more competitive and there's definitely some downsides. And I really like this quote by Warren Buffett. It goes, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. And I definitely agree with that as messed up as it is. I wish it wasn't like that, but that is absolutely true. All right, so let's look at the stats really quickly. The early career pay is about 55,000. Mid career pay is 98,000. The demand score is gonna be 133 out of 100, which is amazing. The meaning is 40%, which is on the lower side. And the bachelor grads per year is about 37,000. And this is for the finance degree. I'm just using that one as an example. But the accounting degree has really good stats as well. So some of the pros of getting an accounting or a finance degree would of course be high earning potential. Especially with a finance degree, you can make a ton of money. But even with an accounting degree, there are positions out there where you can make a lot of money. For instance, I interviewed Bill Hanna, the financial controller on this channel, and he makes, I believe, well over $250,000 a year. And he got an accounting degree. The second pro is there is a wide range of career options. Just about every industry, every business out there needs an accountant. So if you get into accounting, you don't like the specialty that you chose, it's very easy for you to switch into a different type of specialty. Or if you don't like the business that you work for, it's going to be very easy for you to go to a different company. And then the third pro here is going to be transferable skills. So when you get an accounting degree, for instance, you are going to learn how to manage your money. You're going to learn all about how money works, and that is going to help you in your personal life as well. So people who get accounting degrees tend to be really good when it comes to financial management, things like investing, saving, making good financial decisions. So some of the cons of getting specifically a finance degree are going to be intense competition. And this goes for you if you get an accounting degree and then you try to go for some of the more competitive jobs as well. But yeah, the finance industry is 
is highly competitive. It's kind of like a winner takes all zero sum game type of industry. So there are people who work in finance that make tens of millions, sometimes even billions of dollars a year. There's hedge fund managers that make billions of dollars a year. And then there's a ton of people who work in finance that don't last very long. And then the second con is long work hours. If you're going to be working in finance, chances are you're going to be working 60 to 80, maybe even more hours per week. And then the <clears throat> and then the third con is the stressful work environment and the risk of burnout. Number five on the list is going to be management information systems. Now this one is technically a business degree, but it is a business degree that has technology related aspects to it. And it tends to specifically focus on information, AKA data. And I've talked a lot on this channel about how data is more valuable than even oil or gold. And it's definitely kind of messed up how they've been collecting our data without our consent, like basically semi illegally, but they're, you know, no one's probably going to get in trouble for it, but they definitely were not supposed to do it, but they did it anyways. But yeah, that's a topic for a different video. So MIS is basically kind of like a company's GPS, right? So just like a GPS is going to guide you to your desired location in the most efficient way possible, MIS is going to help you use data to run your company in the most efficient way possible. So when it comes to the stats, MIS is really solid. Early career pay is gonna be about 60,000, mid-career pay is 105,000. The demand score is 113 out of 100, which is great. And the meaning is 42%, which is relatively good for business degrees because they tend to be a little bit low. And then the amount of bachelor grads per year is a little over 7,000. So some of the pros of getting an MIS degree, first of all, you are going to have a super flexible skill set, right? When you learn about business and technology, that's such a rare combination and just about everybody out there is going to need that skill set. It also has really high demand. There's great career opportunities. The salary is really competitive. It's a constantly evolving field and there tends to be high job satisfaction. Some of the cons of getting an MS degree is the fact that you are going to have to learn some really technical skills. It also tends to be a fast paced environment there is a risk of burnout. And because of the fact that you're kind of working with data, it is relatively limited when it comes to creativity. Now, one thing I will say about technology related careers is a lot of the time you can get into them without a college degree. Now that doesn't mean college degrees are scams by any means, they can help people get into it, but you do have to take it on a case by case basis because for some people going to a boot camp, getting a certification, maybe you know doing self training even can be a good idea. For instance, I've interviewed a ton of people on this channel that have got gotten entry level technology related jobs like James, for instance, who was able to get a job in two weeks and he didn't even have access to a computer. He literally used an iPad and I will link that so you can check it out if you want to. Number four is going to be computer science. And this is one of the best degrees out there. And computer science, of course, would lead you to going into software development. And there's a quote by Steve Jobs where he basically says, everybody in this country should learn to program a computer because it teaches you to think. And computer science really is like a toolbox that is filled with many different versatile tools. And these can be used to solve complex problems. But with that being said, you definitely do have to know your stuff. It used to be you could get into software development basically knowing nothing as long as you kind of networked. And now you do actually have to know your stuff. You have to actually know how to be a software developer. You know, there's a really good quote by Pablo Picasso where he basically says, computers are useless. They can only give you answers. And that's actually a really deep quote because basically what he's saying there is where real intelligence lies is asking the right questions. And if you don't ask the computers the right questions, then you're not going to get good answers, right? Garbage in, garbage out. And this is why with ChatGPT, for instance, everybody's freaking out about this thing called prompting. And prompting, what it essentially is, is asking the right questions. And when you ask it the right questions, you're gonna get better answers. Now, when it comes to the stats here, this is actually my number one degree out of like 900 degrees on my college degree ranker. So the early career pay is gonna be about 68,000, mid-career pay is 114,000. The demand score is absolutely off the charts at 154. The meaning is 41%, which is kind of normal for technology-related degrees. And the number of bachelor grads per year is about 23,000. So some of the pros of getting a computer science degree, I mean, there is a lot of pros. I mean, high demand, 
uh, competitive salary, versatile skills, creativity, access to benefits that you can get when you work in technology that you probably aren't gonna get in any other industry. I mean, the list really goes on and on and on. Some of the cons of a computer science degree is, first of all, the curriculum is extremely challenging. It is one of the harder degrees. Another con is the technology is constantly changing. Another con is the job market has gotten more competitive. You really do need to know your stuff and you need to specialize to get a job in software development. Development. And another con is it is a relatively sedentary lifestyle. So you're gonna be sitting on your computer typing quite a bit. Also, many software developers find their job to be relatively boring because they'll typically do like one to three hours of work and then they have nothing to do for the rest of the day, which is a quality problem to have. And I made an entire video about whether a computer science degree is worth it or not. You can definitely check that out. So if you find videos like this informative, by the way, definitely share this with friends and family. That is one of the main ways that people actually find my channel is people find it extremely informative. They think it's super valuable because nobody else is really doing this. This is kind of the channel that I wish that I had at 18, for instance. And so they'll share it with their friends or their family whenever they see somebody who needs to see it. Number three on the list is going to be industrial industrial engineering. And this is actually one of my favorite engineering degrees. And there's a great quote about industrial engineering, which is industrial engineering is not just about manufacturing. It's about improving any system, including healthcare, finance, and even entertainment. And this quote is from Lisa Bosman, who is the president of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers. Industrial engineering is basically a combination of engineering and sort of a logistics slash operations management type role. And an industrial engineer is kind of like the conductor of an orchestra. Just how a conductor coordinates different musical instruments to make a beautiful symphony. Industrial engineers are going to coordinate the different aspects of a system in order to optimize its performance. So the stats here are really good as well. So early career pay is $67,000 a year. Mid career pay is $110,000. Demand score is really good at 101 out of 100. Meaning is 46%. And the bachelor grads per year is about 5,000. So some of the pros here are going to be high demand, diverse job opportunities, high earning potential, problem solving skills, and continuous learning. I guess the continuous learning could be a pro or a con depending on your perspective. Some of the cons here are there is a very high academic demand. Engineering school is no joke. The workloads can also be relatively heavy. There can be high stress levels as well. There is limited creativity in this career and you're going to have limited interaction with other people. Next one on the list, number two is going to be mechanical engineering engineering. And a really good quote here is mechanical engineering is the basis of all engineering. It provides the background for understanding and designing everything from tiny micro mechanical devices to large systems such as spacecraft. And this was actually from the lead of the Mars Rover project, whose name is Adam Steltzner. So mechanical engineering is basically the backbone of modern technology. Just as the backbone provides stability and support in the human body, mechanical engineers design and build structures and systems that power the world. So the stats on this one are really good as well. 66,000 early career pay, 110,000 mid-career pay. The demand score is 105. The meaning is 51% and the bachelor grads per year is 32,000. So some of the pros of getting a mechanical engineering degree are going to be job opportunities, lots and lots of job opportunities. I mean, mechanical engineer, that skill set is incredibly flexible, right? And that is the next pro, which is a flexible skill set. You also have high earning potential. You can make a lot of money as a mechanical engineer or in careers related to mechanical engineering. I've talked about this before on the channel, but engineers over a lifetime make the most money out of any type of degree. Another pro is innovation. Mechanical engineers are great at innovating and you know coming up with creative solutions to different problems that people are having in the world. Some of the cons are, of course, the challenging coursework. Uh, engineering school is no joke. Like I said, engineering degrees are incredibly difficult. Another con is engineering jobs, especially at the entry level, do tend to be relatively competitive. There's also a high level of responsibility. The work hours can also be long and you have limited creativity. The next one on the list is going to be a nursing degree or any other healthcare related degree. And nurses are basically like the foot soldiers of the healthcare system, right? They're in the trenches helping people out with their own hands. And the stats on this one are great. So early career pay is 60,000. Mid-career pay is 79,000, but keep in mind a lot of nurses work part-time. 
So it's probably in reality a lot higher than that. The demand score here is off the charts at 135. The meaning is off the charts at 83% and healthcare related degrees tend to be very high. And there are 134,000 bachelor grads per year. So the pros of getting a nursing degree is there's very high demand. The salary is also really good. The job satisfaction does tend to be relatively high, especially in the long run because of the fact that you're helping people out so much. Nursing also tends to be one of the most versatile healthcare professions. And there's also opportunity for continued learning as well as career advancement within nursing. Some of the cons of nursing is it tends to be extremely physically and emotionally draining. There's also quite a bit of educational and training requirements. Sometimes the hours can be really weird. So you might be working like 12 hour shifts and that could be a pro or a con. So for instance, when I was in healthcare, I absolutely loved 12 hour shifts because they felt about the same as eight hours to me. Another con is you have to deal with a bunch of red tape, right? The government has certain regulations. They might make you do things that you don't enjoy, like in the you know, whole cough cough situation that happened. I think we all knew that the government had no idea what they were doing and it was absolutely ridiculous, but you couldn't really say anything. And there is potential for high levels of burnout. Click on this video right now to check out my ultimate guide to choosing a college degree.